What's up everyone, Ian Stewart here, and in this video I want to show you all the different ways you can adjust gain in Wavelab Pro 10. So on the surface, this probably seems like a pretty boring topic, but Wavelab is a little unique in how it allows you to adjust gain throughout the signal flow of a, of a montage project. Um, and specifically, it actually gives you five different points where you can adjust gain. And so just knowing where these are, how to access them, a few different ways to access them, and some potential uses, I think can be actually be really, really helpful and, and kind of power up your workflow. So the first thing, we're just going to run through it from, from kind of first in the chain to last in the chain. The first is this pre-gain, and this is found in the Clips tab. And the pre-gain, um, if I go in here and just kind of move this up and down, you can see the gain of the um, clip changing there. And this gain is just, it's what it says, it's pre. So it's pre any effects. So any effects that you load onto the clip or subsequently load onto a track, of course, that gain is happening before that. So if you need to get um, a clip kind of leveled before it goes into some sort of processor or dynamics processor or something. That's a great way to do that. Another place you can access this is in the meta normalizer. And if you select exclude audio montage effects and apply this, you're going to see it's going to apply that gain uh, to the pregain tab. So now it's at negative 0.156 dB. Um, so you can use this to, to set up a whole bunch of files really quickly so that they all go out and hit your analog chain, for example, at the appropriate level. And in fact, that's exactly how I use that. The next point in the chain is the envelope. The envelope by default happens before clip effects, but there is an option here, envelope after effects. And if you select that, that envelope now happens after clip effects. Now, why would you want to switch these? Um, if you're trying to level out a song, maybe you've got a chorus that needs to come up a little bit and level, um, you could do that. You know, you'd want to do that probably before um, any clip effects. So you could use that to kind of level out different sections of a song. If, on the other hand, you want to do a fade at the end of a song and you've got, you know, um, some compression working that's kind of dependent on this, you know, the, the audio hitting at this one given threshold around a knee or something, and you want to do, you know, a nice long, slow fade out, you don't want the level of that clip to drop through that threshold, through that knee, and start reacting differently. So you might want to use, a, do a fade post effects. Now, unfortunately, I don't know of a way to do um, both a pre effects and post effects uh, envelope, but this is actually another really good use case for super clips, which we talked about in the previous video. So you could do all your kind of leveling, uh, pre effects on, um, a clip, then create a super clip and then set the super clip envelope to post effects, um, and do your fades that way if you wanted. So that's another kind of powerful use for super clips. Next up, there's this post gain field. And post gain is actually the same as this clip gain fader here. So if I move this clip gain, um, you'll see the waveform change and you'll also see this post gain field to go up and down, right? So if I just move this here, you can see that's all kind of tied together. Another way to access this is also via the meta normalizer, but here, if you click X, if you uncheck rather, exclude audio montage effects, it's gonna look at anything on the clip, anything on the track, and anything on the montage output and factor that in and do a post gain adjustment. So right now it's running. It's gonna go through here. I've got um, nothing on the track, but I've got uh, a couple limiters on the output. So it's factoring those in, it's figuring out how that loudness is all going to work and it's slowly going through because it's got to ren basically render through um, and in any second here you're going to see there's the post gain drops down by that same amount as before um, but now it's in the post gain field rather than the pre gain so um, by using the meta normalizer in different ways you can actually additionally access either of those fields which is pretty powerful 
at this point, we kind of move from the clip central focused things, you know, e either these pre or post gain fields here um, or the envelope over into the inspector. So there's kind of this transition point halfway through. This is the, the third way to adjust gain. We just talked about the fourth way is on the track. And that's just going to apply to every single clip on, you know, track A or track B here. Um, so if I need to make a global change for whatever reason, just to one, one track, you could do it there. You don't see it visually, but that's okay. Um, by, um, and well, not by default, but the only way this works is that this gain is post effects. So any effects that you insert on the track happen before the gain. Finally, there's the output gain. And the reason I mentioned that the track is <clears throat> the track effects are before your fader here is that the output is flexible by default. The fader is actually pre effects. So you can use it to drive into a final limiter. You could have a limiter here. You could have some dither and you could use this fader to, to get your overall album or project level set. If you need to though, or if you wanted to, you can click this button here and that'll flip this fader to post effects. So now all the effects are happening first, and then you can make a gain adjustment. If you use this the way I do, where you've got limiters and stuff on this final output, you probably don't want to be dropping the gain after that. But if you needed to for, I don't know, an Apple digital masters where, you know, there's a CD, haha, <laughs> CD version that's real hot, you know, where the ceilings at, um, you know, negative, uh, 0.3 or something. And then you wanted to do a version that you just, you need a little more head headroom for an Apple digital masters. You know, you could drop this down by, um, 0.7 here, um, something like that and give yourself a DB of, of headroom, for example, um, if need be. So a couple potential ways to use it. So that's basically it in a nutshell, you've got pre gain, which happens before any clip effects. You've got the uh, clip envelope, which can happen before or after clip effects. You've got post gain, which happens after clip effects. You've got, um, which is the same as this clip gain slider here. You've got the track gain, which is post track effects. And you've got output gain, which is pre or post output effects. So a lot of different ways to tackle it. Um, but, all very powerful in their own right. So I hope this was helpful and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much.